was just wondering where, what have I got myself into? <laughs> so, um, I spent most of my life wondering that only. <laughs> so, okay, uh, I'm not an extempo speaker. I, you know, it's, uh, I don't feel I have something that important to say. So, I generally go into question answer kind of a mode. So, people ask me things, I give my viewpoint. So, I have a viewpoint about things. I, I look at life, I look at myself, I look at other people, I look at life, I look at experiences from a certain viewpoint. So that viewpoint is something that I learned from my experiences, that's what it taught me and uh, works for me. It works for me and uh, I think that you know it could work for a lot of people too. So I left the army not knowing what I'm going to do and just just before actually before I left the army I had a I had an accident I'm quite accident prone apparently so so I had an accident while combat free fall you know my parachute basically I had three parachute fa uh, system failures and I got out of it so so uh, I had an injury in my spine and I was in hospital for some time and during that time, actually, I was just researching on the internet that, okay, what, what is it that I want to do, you know, just, just gathering knowledge. And uh, if spirituality is a thing, so I was ex actually exploring, since I had been dealing with a lot of life and death, and uh, I was questioning the nature of reality itself. What is real and what is it? You know, why is this a world where we are, you know, we are... We being the apex species on this planet, you know, हमारे ऊपर कौन है? हमारे ऊपर भगवान है, right? Above us there is a god supposedly, and and uh, that's a god that you you know you, you don't see or get to meet, you know, and ask him questions like, but what are you up to, man? What's all this going on? So so you have to look at yourself, you know. So between God and you, between God and human beings, there is nothing else. So ultimately, the onus of what we do is on us, right? So, so from there, you start taking responsibility for yourself, taking responsibility for what you like doing for your own life, and you start making choices, right? So, so, uh, so anyway, so I was in hospital, and uh, there was this 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 uh, Air Force officer who was just in the next room. He was uh, he was on a wheelchair. He he had. Uh, he had been in hospital for four years and by that time and four years ago he had basically dived into a swimming pool, hit his, hit his head in the shallow and cracked his neck and got basically chest down paralyzed instantly. And he had just got married a month before that. So four years he had been in hospital and every night you know I could, I, I used to hear him talk with his family and things like that. So I, it was you know a little messy. So I had a feeling of empathy towards him, not sympathy, uh, but empathy, that I could kind of feel what that guy might be going through. So anyway, I kept my distance, and one day he came to me on a wheelchair, and he could just about just manage to push his push his wheels. So he came to me and he asked me, you know, sir, I've heard you are a commando and things like that, so you must be doing underwater diving and things like that. Can a person like me do that? So. I said, okay, you know, let me get back to you. I went back on the internet and started researching, you know, people with disabilities or people on wheelchairs diving. And this is back in 2015 or 16, what, what was it? And I found this video of a lady, and a Brit uh, lady, and she was on a wheelchair, chest down paralyzed. She was, uh, she was, she had basically scuba cylinders strapped to the back of the wheelchair, and she had, uh, she had these propellers on the wheelchair and and she had a big kind of a plane under the, uh, like a wing under the wheelchair, and she was in a dress, in a gown, and she was basically doing ballet underwater on her wheelchair. So I showed this to this Air Force officer and I said, Ki, buddy, it's possible, like look at what, what she's doing. So, you know, he said, Ki, sir, ye kaise hoga? this is very complicated, ye kaise hoga? and things like that. So I just kind of, you know, told him, okay, you know, I promise you, I'll take you diving one day and let it go. So from there on, I started calculating and I saw the expanse, the expanse of disability. I started researching, I started seeing that, okay, there are 1.2 billion people with, you know, problems like this. And, and uh, you know, basically around 15% of the global population is suffering some of the other form of disability and things like that. And I just thought, 
you know, there must be more people like me. There must be so many people like him, and there must be so many people like me. So there, these are people who have some dreams and want to do something, and then there are people like me who probably have the capability to fulfill that dream. And that's enough, that's enough. That's enough of, you know, enough for life. If you can do that much, that's enough. So, so you know, I thought that if, if I can collect people like myself, more and more people like myself, and we kind of, you know, focus our brain power, we focus our energy, we focus our will, we focus our belief into that direction, we will make it happen. So I just thought that, okay, then there are people with disabilities, and then I thought that there are people who are terminally ill, right? People, people who've got cancer or this or that or whatever, and who, you know, got a time clock running. So, so I thought that, you know, the numbers are massive. So if we can, can we organize this? Can we put it into some kind of a system which is self-sustaining, where it can earn money and rotate that money back into this system so that, you know, it becomes cyclic and, and all these people who want their dreams to be fulfilled and they're, they, they want to live a life and experience simple things. You know, one simple thing before I die, let me experience what is skydiving like. Let me experience what it's to be in the mountains, what is experience what it is to be under the water in the sea. So simple things like that. So if, if, we, can, if we can make that happen, well, it's a life worth living, you know. So it started with that. The Asian Diving Expo was happening for the first time. The entire diving industry from across the world had come. Somebody had heard about us and said, you know, Major Saab, bohut acha kaam kar why don't you tell other people about what you're doing? So they put me on a stage, right? But the reason why I was there is because they had a pool and they had, we could have actually conducted the entire diving for people who were paralyzed in Bombay in that pool. So I wanted that pool, so I went and stood on that stage, right? So we were talking and, you know, things like that. And uh, I realized, by the time Bombay got over is when I realized that that I'm constantly asking people for things. Somebody I'm asking for diving equipment, somebody I'm asking for the pool, somebody I'm asking for, I'm constantly finding myself asking people, telling them who I am, what I'm doing, and you know, like hoping that, you know, that person will understand what we're doing and give us what we need, so that we can do what we're doing, right? So that kind of existence or that kind of operational style was not working out for me. So I kind of took a break, I went home, I went to my mom's place in, in back in, in Kerala and I was, I basically, in the drawing room there's a carpet and uh, I bought a case of beer and uh, I parked there on that carpet for three days. I used to wake up, I used to drink beer, I used to go back to sleep. I used to wake up, I used to drink beer, I used to go back to sleep. That's what I did for three days. I switched off, zeroed out. Just zero. So three days I drank beer and slept and didn't think anything. I just shut down. I said that, you know, forget about empathy, forget about sympathy, forget about pain, forget about sorrow, forget about happiness, forget about success, forget about failure, forget about every damn thing that, you know, that you are, a, that you are playing around in this universe with. Just out of the window. So three days I zeroed out. Fourth morning I woke up. I just woke up and in my head there were these three world records, right? Land, air and water, three elements. I, it, just, it just came like that. Our, this, it was a quantum solution to a quantum problem, right? So what happens in life is that we, we, we run behind things. We will go to XYZ person because that person is powerful or we'll go to XYZ person because that's that person's job or we'll go to an XYZ person because that person has money because we constantly feel that we need someone else to walk with us to be able to achieve what we want. And that's a loop. That's a loop you're not gonna get out of if you don't realize it. So, so uh, and that's one of the most limiting factors that human beings experience. Actually, human beings are the gods. There are no gods who are going to throw something at you from heaven, right? There is you, and there is you, and there is you, and there is what you can do. That's what it is real. That is what I believe in. There is a God, there is, there is a supreme power, there is a realization of what? Of you only, yeah? It's a realization of you. So, I mean, that's my opinion, right? That's what I have experienced, that is my truth. So, so, so I thought that, okay, so how does the world work? 
There is one way that the world works is where you run behind things and you beg people and you ask people and you give presentations and you make business plans and you do what not and you show the other person of what great value that you're going to bring around and then you wait and hope that the other person is going to get it and is going to give you what you think you need is in terms of money or in resources or in connections or whatever it is that, that you're, you're talking to that person for, right? So I thought, okay, it's all a game of energy. You know, it's a, all a game of perception. It's an illusion. It's a real illusion. So if you can create, create a bigger illusion in the reality, you will suck in what you want, right? So if you, if you, instead of running behind energy which is distributed all over, all over in different people and things like that, if you, if you are, if if you operate in a style where you center out, you stop, you stop and you stand and you say, I will create energy standing here. I'll create that energy and I'll create so much energy that whatever I need will come. So that's how we operate, right? So we thought of three world records. We said we will show something to the world that the world will come to me. The world will come to us. The world will come to us with what we need and it will come to us with what we need at the right time. When we need it, let's, let's do it. So that's the kind of a thing probably that comes to you once you have understood life and death, you know. You've understood that, okay, there is life and okay, there is death. And in between that life and death, I exist. And if I exist, then whatever the dreams that I have in my brain, which are coming from my heart, which are flowing up from my heart, are possible. It just requires me to pursue them. Life is about living your dream. I mean, that's what I think, in my opinion. That's success, right? I realize that at some point, I realized that creation, the ability to create, the ability to manifest something into your life, in, into your experience, is far, far, far more powerful than being able to destroy something. It's more fun, basically. So, but you realize that after you, <laughs> you're done destroying stuff, you know. So it's like that. So operation was that. Blue is the color of the earth. So our earth is blue, right? It's like a blue marble. So blue is the color of the earth and freedom is freedom. So I realized that through disability, through, through the concept of weakness, through the concept of in inability which is, which is attached to people with disabilities, you know, if that concept is shattered, if the most weakest section of society can do something that is extremely that powerful, right, in the physical space, then basically what it means is that anyone can do anything. It's a free word. It is a free word. It's a free word. So, Operation Blue Freedom.